Okay. Hi. <laughs> this talking to the camera stuff is always so weird to me as I'm as I'm rotating in my fucking stool. Normal vlog shit. I'm gonna do this the whole time. Just the whole. <laughs> I guess this is the first um, official entry in the in the um, the world famous stand up vlog I'm starting. <laughs> For this show, I have, a, I have a show in San Diego tonight at seven o'clock. It's about 3.30 right now. And um, it's an outdoor show from these guys who do like, it's called uh, PB Backyard Comedy, like Pacific Beach, which is an area of San Diego. And they put on these awesome shows. Um, I think it's like almost sold out. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So normally when you do, when I do a San Diego show, I do a lot of shows in San Diego just because I like get a lot of stage time there. It's a lot of driving, but the shows are awesome. And since I'm not famous in LA, I try to go to San Diego a lot just because I have like a lot more, I guess, clout there for lack of a better term. That sounds kind of douchey, but that's it kind of is like that, <laughs> unfortunately. So normally when, when I do a show in San Diego, I, from LA, I have to, you have to leave at like noon or one for like a seven o'clock show. Cause dude, it takes up, it takes straight up like four hours to get there with traffic normally, and then two hours to get back. So, so not only do you have to leave super early, but I try to do multiple shows if I do that, just to save, just to make the trip worth it. So this is one of the few times I'm actually going for just one show, just because I haven't done stand-up since the end of November and I'm just desperate to do a show. And he asked me to do it and I was like, yeah, dude, let's, let's fucking dance. So I'm pretty excited for the show. Um, luckily with traffic, it's not gonna be super far. It should only take me like two and a half, maybe three hours, which is sucks, but it's not super bad. I'm bringing a sandwich on the road, being very cute. What y'all know about that motherfucking turkey cheese, mayo, mustard, pickles on a whole wheat? Forget it, bro. And the LaCroix. Me on the road is eating better than some of y'all at home. And it's gonna be weird because I haven't done stand up in so long. So, you know, for my set, I think I'm just gonna try to focus on just like getting the rust back off. Um, I'm not gonna do too much new stuff just because I wanna just make sure the greatest hits work. So egotistical, greatest hits. <laughs> I wanna see if those jokes still work and we'll see if I can still, uh, See if I can still do stand up. See you there. I'm on the road, sitting in traffic. Okay, for sure should have left earlier. Um, didn't think there was gonna be that much traffic, and now there's just so much. So much traffic. Why are people not at home? Stay home, everyone. You hear me, everyone? You hear me inside my soundproof box? Yeah, so I'm I'm uh I thought I was gonna get there like, I don't know, 30 minutes before, ideally, but now I'm gonna get there 15, if not less, because I'm gonna have to stop and pee because I have the bladder of a, of a young 12 year old girl and I'm probably gonna have to get gas. So it really didn't play in this that well at all. Anyways, we'll see if I, um, see if I fucking make it. All right, you guys, this next comic, another good friend of mine, hilarious, travels all around the country. Let's make it the welcome clap. Put up for Will Burkhart, clap it up for Will! By the way, is this, does this place, is this not like, can you think of a place more likely that a body would be dumped here, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> this has been in so many HBO series by this time. I would love the idea of like, of like fucking mobsters coming up here like, tonight's the night. And then they see this, they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a hundred witnesses. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> they just dumped a body, for sure. But be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool. Just don't look at them, don't look at them. Just be cool, memorize the license plate. Seven, nine, five, eight, seven, three, N. <laughs> Local junk kingpin taken down by stand-up comedian that no one knows. <laughs> Local hero. That's the guy that saved San Diego? He's the guy? <laughs> I had a girl now. I, uh, I, I met her on, on Bumble because how the fuck else do you meet someone during a pandemic? And it's not, I'm glad I get to not do it anymore. It's great to not have to do... Because Bumble was such a weird thing because girls would do everything. Which sounds cool. But dudes, we, it was just kind of... We just have to like fucking sit... Just, just wait around for a girl to get bored. Hopefully she gets bored today and messes me. <laughs> Hopefully fucking work wasn't too stressful and she fucking... <laughs> Hopefully her anxiety is low enough that she could fucking hit me up, but whatever. <laughs> it's nice. What's cool though is that she's like dope, which is, um, it's a new thing for me dating someone who's like cool. Uh, a lot of them have been like, not that cool. Um, 
they're not here, so. But actually, they could be. Fucking, it's darkness. They could all be here. <laughs> In a group chat like this, motherfucker. <laughs> Even though he took down a drug lord, he's still a piece of shit. <laughs> All right, show's done. I'm in my car. So I I left the venue and just like a one minute away, I pulled over into this dirt road because <laughs> I was too insecure to have people watch me make a fucking dorky vlog video. Vlog video, 80. Show went great. Honestly, um, I did 15 minutes. I featured, so I was right before the headliner, which is kind of the sweet spot. And it was great, man. I, I gotta be honest. I was... I right before I went on stage, I was kind of like a little bit of that panic of like, oh shit, because I was like setting up my camera and talking to people. And I was like, man, I hope I remember my set. And I did, man. And I honestly, like, I didn't feel rusty at all. If, if anything, this is going to sound crazy, but like, I almost feel like I've never been better, which is so bizarre to say, not only during COVID, but also not after, after not doing it for three months. I don't know. I'm sure I'll look at the footage and hate everything, but, <laughs> but in the moment, it felt really good and, and mostly everything worked. And of course, when I looked at my camera, I went up to it and it was like complete, the most blurry that you can possibly think of. And I was like, shit, hopefully that happened when I walked off. Sure enough, I probably got two and a half minutes of in focus footage and the rest is just like completely blurry. Bruh. Luckily, the footage you will see from the show is um, the guys who put on the show. Luckily, they were filming with two cameras and they're gonna send me some footage. So thank God because now I know what to do for next time. <laughs> so anyways, um, overall, yeah, I'm just, I'm super happy. Some some people there, you know, I respected, so it's really important for me to do well in front of people like I respect, you know, because like the respect of your peers is just as, if not more important than, uh, than the people at the show. I had some good riffs. Was that a beer or a fart? <laughs> <laughs> also, it's hard to do crowd work where you can't see anyone. I'm just like, where are you from? It's just a tree stump. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's so he's shy, huh? <laughs> Overall, this is just like such a nice way to get back into stand up, man. San Diego has just like embraced me so much and shown me so much love. And these crowds, like, I just always have connected with. Probably because I look like every guy who's ever lived in San Diego. But the guy who runs the show, Josh Nelson, shout out Josh. Um, he said a really nice thing to me. He said, I, you know, he's like, I know how hard you work and you, it really shows. Like, you can tell you're, you know, you were always funny, but now you're getting like really funny. Um, and that means a lot, man from guys like that who like have been running shows for a long time. Um, he used to book all sorts of, he, used to, he would book Brent Moore and Andrew Santino, Jeff Dye, those guys. So hearing compliments like that from that dude, um, that's the shit that really keeps you going. You know, I think people think that the compliments from people at the show are really important, which they are. But man, guys like that who've been around for so long and seen some of the greats do it, hearing that is like, that's the shit that motivates you, really. And I know this isn't very funny, but um, but I just wanna show you guys kind of the real, what it's actually like to be a comic and, and what actually goes through your head. So now I'm gonna drive home. It's about 8.54. Um, I got about two hour drive ahead of me and, um, and get ready because I, I, I got an early flight tomorrow morning going to Arizona. So that'll probably be the next video. Either way, thanks for watching this. I appreciate it. This is one of many. These videos will also get better, by the way. This is like, this is my first time really doing this at a show. So bear with me if it, if it's, uh, if like the lighting's too dark or, you know, excited for you guys to kind of be on this, uh, on this kind of journey with me in a way until next time, I'm going to get out of here before I get killed. Mm -hmm.